Hi friends, welcome to WebChamp. In this video, I'm going to talk about the set in Python. Okay, so let's understand what is set and how we can create this set in Python and what are the characteristics of sets. So set is a built-in data structure that represents the unordered collection of unique items. Okay, by definition, we can understand that the set is not going to contain the duplicate values. Meaning, if you pass the duplicate values to the set, it will remove that value. It will keep only one value automatically. Even this is unordered, meaning the way we store the data in the whatever the sequence you follow, it doesn't matter for the sets. We can't predict and at what order it will preserve the data in the system. Okay, so sets are defined. Okay, how to create the sets? So obviously by using the curly brackets, we can define the sets or by using the set constructors. So before that, we will go through the characteristics as, a, as we have discussed. Set items are unordered, meaning we cannot predict what order it will follow. Every time it will follow a new order. Or it may be a same. You will feel same, but no, it's not like that. It is going to work. Meaning every time whenever you try to execute the code, it will return the data in the different different orders. Even set items do not support the indexes, meaning there is no way to access the data of set. Okay, there is turn around, but we will see that how. Set items set items are immutable, meaning that that items cannot be changed. Even it do not allow duplicate items to store. Okay, so now let's see how we can create the set. So we can create the set by using the curly brackets. Okay, let me open the Visual Studio. Okay, and let me open the file. Okay, so now how to create set. So if we say yes is equal to, yes is a variable name that I'm going to use for set, okay. And inside a curly bracket, you are supposed to pass the values, okay. So I pass the value. If you go and check the type of this, see if I say type of yes, and if you want to see the output, obviously, You, so you are supposed to print this. Now let's run this code. If I come here, I already started the command prompt. So here we can see that this is class set, right? So this is of set type variable. <clears throat> now, the properties we have seen or the characteristics, it is unordered. So if you try to Print yes. Okay, so I will say print yes. And I don't want this. <clears throat> okay. I will add few more items to this. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and four. Okay, this is what the sequence I am going to follow. Now, if I go and if I simply execute the code, you can see that it is in a, in this order. So now four is coming at the fourth place. Okay. And it is at last place, the way we have created sets. Okay. So order, meaning this is unordered. It, it will not follow the order which we used to create the set. Okay. So again, if I go and if I run this, So for this, it is giving the data in the uh, like one to 10, but yes, even though we disturb the order like this, if I say seven, five and all. And now if I try to run this, still it is giving me the data in this order. Right. So whatever the sequence we follow to store the data that is not followed by the 
sets. That's why we say this is unordered. Set items are not indexed. Okay, instead of this, if I, okay, index is not, not there, meaning we cannot access the items of sets the way we were accessing the data for set and uh, tuple and list. That is not possible with set. Okay, so here, if I say Brahma, okay, I'm going to add different, different items here. If I say Web Charm, if I say Pune, okay, if I say If I say Maharashtra, if I say YouTube, any any kind of okay data, I would be fine for me. And now, if I run this, you can see that even though I used YouTube at last position, it is returning at this place. Then Webjam, Pune, Maharashtra, Brahma, the sequence which I follow is different. Okay, so it is returning web cham, then Pune, then Maharashtra. So it, it meaning this is unordered. This is completely unordered collection. It do not support indexes, meaning if you try to access the data by index. Okay, and uh, if I try to run this. Even you can see that set object is not subscriptable, meaning there is no way to access the item subsets using index. Okay. Then how to access the items of index? Even, okay, one more thing I would like to show you that if you try to store the duplicate data in the sets, okay, I'm going to say YouTube two times. I'm going to say WebCham two times. Okay. You will get the unique items only, not the duplicate ones. Here you can see that WebChamp is coming only once, YouTube is coming only once, but in my data set, whatever the data set I use. So to remove the duplicates, we can use the sets. Okay, if you have a list of data and uh, if you want to remove the duplicate from that. So very easily, if you pass the list to this set, or if you convert the list to the set, it will remove the duplicate data and then return the data with unique values. Right. So now, how to create set? So we have seen one way is that using the curly brackets. Another way is there is constructor called set constructor. So you can use the set constructor also. If you are using set constructor, you don't need to use the curly brackets. Okay. Even this is also a type of set. And if I run this, you can see that again, that is behaving in the same way, the way we have created the set using curly brackets, right? Removing duplicates and all. Okay. So now how to access the question remains same. How to access the data? If it is not indexed, then how to access the data of set? So there is no way to access the data, access the elements of set. But if you want to check if, is there any item is existing in the set or not? In that case, you can use the loop. Okay. To access this, meaning loops are applicable. Okay. You can simply loop for i in yes. Okay. I is not a standard variable. Okay. I just, it can be anything. I'm using i for every time, but this is what my habit. You can use ABCD, your name, and whatever. So here you can see that it, it is able to loop through that. And if you want to check for the any specific item, what you can do, you can go and you can check whether this what, what and all. So if I is equal equal to if I say Brahma and I will say yes. Okay. So like this, I created a logic. Okay, what what does this mean? Okay, I will I will go to the each item of sets. Then here we will check whether any loop returns yes or no. Okay, so if the value is equal to Brahma somewhere in the set, so this will become true. And if this is true, 
this is going to print yes otherwise it will not print one okay so initially i will say brahma one okay and if i run this you will see it is not going to return anything it's blank meaning the output is not there okay why because there is no match so like this you can use the logic to check the data whether any specific value is exist any specific item is exist in the set or not that is what the only way to access the items of set then even though this is Im immutable but still you can add new items and remove the items from the set Okay, this is how the, this data structure is created in the Python. Okay, so if you want to add something to the set, you need to use the add method or you can use update. If you want to add single item, you are supposed to use the add. Okay, so let me say I would like to add something to this set. So if I say s dot add, and here if I am going to pass the single value as a python okay so add method is useful when you have to add a single value if i say yes yes dot add and if i say print yes so you will see that this is going to return the set with python right now when to use update then? Okay, whenever you have to add the another iterable values to this. Okay, another iterable, iterable meaning it can be a list or it can be a tuple or it can be a set. Okay, so in that case, you can use the update method. So I'm going to use here one list and even I will say four, four, Five, okay, so intentionally I have created the duplicate items in the list. Once we get this added, set will remove duplicates and we will get only one value for four. Okay, now you cannot use this add method here. Right. It will throw errors. So for that purpose, you need to use the update method. And here, any type of iterable is valid any number of variables are valid okay so now if i go and if i run this so here one two three four five is getting added right so like this we can add the single item or multiple items if it is tuple the even that is fine if it is set even that is also fine okay triple is nothing but even if that is a string even in that case also it is going to work but it will okay l is not defined okay my bad so yes i yes one i should say yes one because for says for set we already used a variable called yes so the same output we are getting here the way i am getting here okay you even here you can say that this and this the output contain the same value but the order is different here webchamp is first here youtube is first here webchamp is last here brahma is last okay so this is how meaning uh, we can't predict how it is going to return the values okay so there are two methods add method to add the single method single value and if you want to add the multiple values from any of the iterable you can use the update method okay then the set has few methods that we can use to remove the items okay so there is method called remove discard pop and clear okay so let's see how we can use these items I'm sorry these methods if i say s dot remove and here you are supposed to pass the element okay if i pass the element called brahma okay it will remove it will remove the brahma from the state now you can see that there is no Brahma in returned set. Okay, that is fine. What will happen if I specify like this? If the value, whatever the value I specified in the remove method is not there in the set. So in that case, this remove method is going to throw error. Okay, it says the key error. However, if you want to avoid this kind of errors, so you can use the next method called discard method. 
Okay, there is nothing different in remove and discard. Only difference is that this discard method will not throw error while remove method throw error if the item is not exist. So you will not get any error with the discard method. Okay, so now if I go and if I say Brahma one, in this case also you will not get error. If the item is not exist, it is fine. Okay, it is able to return me the data. Okay. So this is how uh, the remove method, discard method is used. Then even we have pop method also. Okay. And uh, obviously here, if you are using pop, so what is the problem with pop? It do not accept any item item value here and by default it is going to remove the last item okay as we know that but the problem is what okay we can't predict the order offset so we don't know what item will be at last position so in that case we can't predict what item it will remove from the set so let's see what it is going to return this time see if i Run this here. You can see that Maharashtra is there, Brahma is there, Webcam is there, YouTube is there, but Python is not there, right? Oh, sorry, Pune is not there. <clears throat> yes, so it has removed Pune this time. Now again, I will go and again I will run. Now Pune is there, but Maharashtra is not there. Okay, if I go and again I will run this. Okay, Brahma is there, Maharashtra is there, YouTube is there, Pune is not there, right? Now again I will run. Again, it has removed Pune. Okay, so this is toggling, meaning uh, the data order will get changed, and uh, the whatever will be the last item at that instance, it will remove that last instance, last item, automatically by using pop method. <clears throat> okay, so if you want to remove uh, everything, all the items from the sets, so you can use clear method. Okay, and you will get empty set as an output. So this is what the indication of empty set. If you don't have any item in the set, it will return the set constructor definition only. Then to perform the operations, obviously this is immutable and in the, even this, it doesn't support the indexes. So it's difficult to perform the operations on the set items. But still, we can use the set to perform the different different types of operations, data operations. So how we can see there are methods we are supposed to use these methods. And let's see how we can use these methods one by one. So there is method called union. If you want to join the two sets, so we can go and we can use the union method. Okay. So let's see how we can use the union method. So this is what my one set I'm going to create the, I will say this is S1, I will say this is S2 and I'm going to create the S2 set here. And yes, if I say one, two, three, okay, that is not even problem. Okay, few values I will consider from that. So Pune is there. And then Brahma is there, okay. And WebChamp. Okay, WebChamp is there. Then I will say any person name like Aditya. And then Shuraj, okay. So I have a data in this way. If I wanted to join these two sets, so I can use union methods to perform the concatenation operation. So yes is equal to, if I say S1 dot union, and here you can pass the another set, any uh, set, okay. So even any kind of iterable, any kind of iterable is fine, I think. Because it says iterable, okay, but that is 
might be specific for the set. Okay, so we are using the set C here. So I will pass S2. And this is going to return us the new set. I'm going to print that. So if you print, let's see how the output behaves now. Yes, it is able to combine the values from both the sets. Okay. And whatever the values are getting duplicated, that values will be removed automatically. And it will re return only unique values. Okay, fine. So, so we got a clear picture that union we can use to join the data of two sets. And even while combining the data of two sets, sets will remove the duplicates. That is fine. And this is what the use of union. Okay. So uh, if you want to do this same by using the operator called pipe symbol. So you can use the pipe symbol to do same. Okay. So this is the shortcut for the union method. Whatever union method does for us. So the pipe symbol can done. If I go and if I run this, you can see that same number of items with the different order order always changes with the set. So we will get the same output by using pipe symbol also. This is what the shortcut for the union method. Then there is something called update method. Update method we have discussed. If you want to add the elements of another iterables to the sets, we can use the update method. Okay, there is no point to see that method again. Then interaction intersection update. Okay, before that, we will understand what is the intersection first. So there is a method called intersection. Okay. So this method find the common elements between two sets. Okay. So let's say uh, I wanted to have the data in this way. Okay, I wanted to return the elements which are exist in both the sets only. So in that case, I can use the intersection. Intersection. Okay. So if I use S1 dot intersection, intersection, and then if I pass the S2 here, so it will go, this method will go and check the common elements between these two and then return only those. So Brahma is there, Pune is there, Webchamp is there, only those items we will get as an output. Otherwise, remaining items will be ignored. Right. So this is how we can use the intersection method. Okay. Let's say the scenario is that, okay, if you don't want to consider, consider the elements that are common, the elements which are not common in both the sets that can be returned. But how? So the way we use intersection, there is method called difference. Okay. Difference. And if I go and if I say, so this is going to return me the YouTube and Maharashtra from first. So this method works a little bit differently. Okay. This is not going to check the data for all. Okay. So it will check the data and it will find the difference. What is the difference between S1 with respect to S2? Okay, so obviously what we, we say that uh, in S2, we don't have YouTube and Maharashtra. YouTube and Maharashtra. That's why we get this output. So you, whenever you have to return the data that is exist in one set, but not in another one, so difference method is going to work. Even there is a shortcut for the difference method. Okay, so if you go, I have added the symbols here. The difference method, we can use the minus symbol also. So if you want to get the same output, you can use S1 minus S2. And if I run this, you will get again two values as we were getting earlier. Right. So this is what the shortcut for difference method. Even for intersection, you can use and. This operator is going to return us the only data which is common in both the sets, the whatever the output we were getting with the help of intersection method, we will get that output here also with the help of am ampersand symbol. Okay, so webcham, Brahma, and Pune. Even it, you can see here it was same. Okay. Now, now what is the mean by intersection difference? Okay, 
So there is a method called intersection difference. Okay, let's go and see what does this, sorry, intersection object. It's not intersection difference. Symmetric difference is there. So here, if I pass S2 as another set, and if I try to print the output, you will, by looking at the output, you, you can consider what it is going to return. Okay, so it is going to return nothing. Okay, so this method will keep only the items that are present in both these sets. Intersection difference. Again, I'm going intersection update. So this method is not going to return anything. So this will update the S1 itself. So we we are supposed to go and print the S1 here, set one here, because this method is going to modify the set one. Okay. And now you will get the output here that Pune Brahma and Web Champ. Meaning what it is going to do, okay, this method will modify the set one and it will remove the items which are not existing in both and it will keep only items that that are exist in both the sets and it is not going to return the new set after performing the operation so obviously it is going to perform the operation on that set whichever we meaning on which set you have called this method so here i am going to use s1 to call this method so it will modify the S1. If you use S2, it will modify the S2. Okay, so you need to print S2 in that case also. Or you need to use S2 for the further use. Okay, so now intersection update is done. Now we have seen the difference method. Difference is uh, what it is going to do. It, obviously, it is going to return the elements that are in one set but not in other okay so there may be a requirement that you may want to return the elements that are in either of the set but not in both okay so meaning any items that are exist in only s1 or only s2 if you want that kind of data, we can use the symmetric difference method. Okay. So if I go and if I say symmetric, symmetric difference. Okay. So here, let's see if we use this only symmetric difference. So this is going to return us the new set. That's why we can store that value somewhere into another set and then we can return the value. But if we go and we use the symmetric difference update method, so update is going to update the existing set. Okay. Now, if I go and if I run this, so you can see that Aditya Maharashtra, Shivraj and YouTube, all these four values are not existing in both the sets. Okay. So symmetric difference is nothing but find out the unique values or not common values between do, those two, two or more sets, whatever the sets we will use here. If you want to use the symmetric difference update, you can use symmetric difference update also, but the difference is that it, again, it is going to return none and then you need to print the S1 here. Then you will see the same output. This is how these methods are going to work. Now, if you want to check any set is a subset of uh, another one, or if you want to check any set is a, a superset of another one. So here you can do that also. So I will remove this and uh, okay. So whatever the values we have, that values we also have in this 
S1. So we can say that S1 is a superset of S2 or we can say that S2 is a subset of S1. So now we will go and we will check if S1 dot S1 is a superset, obviously is a superset of S2. So what it is going to return? So you can see that it is going to return the Boolean value, meaning it, it will say directly either true or false. So you can print that. Here also, even you can store that Boolean value somewhere in the another variable and then you can print. But instead of that, I would prefer to do this. Okay, so it is saying true. It says the S2 is subset of S1. So I will say, or S1 is a superset of S2. So now I will say Aditya here. I will add the one parameter. And now let's say what it says. So it says false. That is not possible. Okay. So I, since our one, we have a one item that is not existing S1, so it will not be a subset. Okay. S2 will not be a subset. If you want to check if is, is it subset or not, so you can do like this. S2 is a subset of S1. Is it true or false? You can check with that. So it is saying true. Yes, it is a subset of S1. So this is how we can perform the operation, different operations to remove the duplicate data to keep the uh, value, specific values from bo uh, both of these sets. Okay, so these many methods are there to perform the operations. Some common operations on the set and we may need to do this in the data operations. So this is very helpful to keep something, to remove something as per the requirement. But yes, Again, this is very much helpful in case of data, data operations. Okay, I hope you like the content of this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Have a nice day. Please do not forget to subscribe the WebChamp and do not forget to share the video with your friends.